Amen. Bless the Lord, everybody. And good afternoon. Uh, today is June the 20th? June 20th. June 20th. First of all, this month is almost over. Secondly, we are almost beyond the midway point of 2020. Where has the time gone? And we've spent half of the first half of the month in quarantine and stay, in home, stay at home orders and all sorts of things. So what a year it is uh, and that it has been so far. Hopefully, prayerfully, uh, we will see um, things getting better uh, the rest of the, the next half of this year. Hopefully the next half will be um, uh, much better uh, than the first half. However, even though things have been difficult, God has been good. Let's get right into our prayer call. Uh, today is uh, prayer call number 89 or 90. Uh, oh, that's a good question. What number is this? Let me check and see what prayer call number this is, uh, because we are, I know we are near prayer call 100, and I certainly bless God for allowing us to see so many uh, prayer calls and to do uh, the prayer calls. You know, anytime you do something for the Lord um, and he allows you to do it uh, for uh, an extended period of time, it is a blessing. This is prayer call number 89. Hallelujah. So then that means on Monday, it's going to be prayer call number 90. I say Monday because uh, we're not going to have a prayer call tomorrow on Sunday uh, because it's Father's Day. Now, our scripture today comes from Philippians chapter number four, verse number six, where Paul says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. You know what? We need to get back to the days of literally praying for everything, like praying for the smallest of our concerns to the greatest of our concerns. I, I remember uh, having conversations with, with senior saints, uh, mothers of the church, and no matter what you told them was wrong, they offered to pray for it. Mother, I broke my fingernail, baby. Let me pray for your fingernail. I'm going to be praying that your fingernail grows back. Uh, 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 mother, uh, my heart was broken. Let me pray that the Lord mend your broken heart. Mother, I, I, I'm, I'm having problems on my job. Let me pray for that job. Listen, they understood what Solomon meant when he said the little foxes uh, ruin the vine or the little foxes uh, will spoil the vineyard, it'll spoil a thing. Uh, you know, they say one rotten apple uh, will spoil a barrel. If one apple can spoil a barrel, and if little foxes can spoil a vineyard, why is it that we don't pray for the little foxes or pray about the little foxes and pray about the rotten apple? Uh, listen, my brothers and sisters, we've got to pray. We got to do some praying and, and, and we've got to make sure that we are not only praying for our big problems. Don't wait until that thing gets big to start praying for it, but start praying while it is small. Pray for the little children. Pray for the little concerns. Pray for the little aches and pains. When you get a little ache and a pain, uh, uh, don't wait until you get a report from the doctor, but ask God, Lord, this little ache, this little pain, should I get this checked out? Pray for the small things. And when you begin to pray about it, I think you will understand that God uh, will begin to move. God does. There's some things that we trigger, some answers that are triggered by our prayers. When we pray, God says, all right, I'm going to move. 
When you pray, God says, I just wanted to hear your request. I just wanted your supplication to be made known. And once you've made it known, according to the scripture, Philippians chapter four, verse six, once you make it known, then God says, I'm going to now start moving. But if you don't say something, you can't expect something. Yes, God can read our minds, but he prefers to hear us pray. Speaking of prayer, I want you to know that we shouldn't just say we're going to pray and not pray. How many times have you heard somebody say, oh, I'm going to pray for you. Oh, I, I'm going to pray for you. Or you ask somebody to pray for you and you wonder, I wonder if they actually prayed for me. You know, I, whenever I say I'm going to pray for somebody, I usually try to at that moment, I'm going to pray for, I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to pray about it. I usually in my spirit try to say to myself, remember to pray, or I try to pray then Lord bless him, Lord do it. I try to pray immediately. So we aren't guilty of saying we're going to pray for somebody or saying we're going to pray about the situation and not actually praying about it. So listen, today, today, this is the day before Father's Day. Father's Day is tomorrow and I want to pray for the fatherless. Yeah, I want to pray for the fatherless. I want to pray for those whose fathers have already gone to glory, whose, all, whose fathers have already died. I want to pray for those who didn't know their fathers. I want to pray for those who did not have a father. Uh, you say, well, why are you praying for them on Father's Day? Why not just pray for the fathers? Because Father's Day is not always an easy day. Father's Day for many is a difficult day. It, it, especially when, uh, uh, you know, there's some extenuating circumstances, some people remembering their fathers in their illness, some people remembering or, or regretting uh, uh, things that happened with their fathers, some people, uh, their fathers are just uh, MIA or, or, or their fathers are ill right now, uh, some people are missing their fathers. I know, I know people that are 70 years old and they still cry when they think about their fathers. I, they're 80 years old and Father's Day is a difficult day for them. I want us to pray even for those fathers who have lost their children. It's a difficult day for them. Some fathers have strained relationships with their children and it's a difficult day for them. Let's pray. Dear God, we just praise you and we thank you for this new day, this 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 fresh day, this new opportunity uh, to worship you and to live uh, for you. Uh, as we uh, look to Father's Day tomorrow uh, and we realize, Lord, that there are many people that don't see Father's Day as a good thing. Uh, they, they see Father's Day as a, as, a, as a painful day. But Lord, I'm asking that you lift the heaviness, oh God, that you lift the heaviness uh, that comes upon that daughter or that son or that granddaughter or that grandson or that great grandson that comes upon them when they think about the absence, the void that has been in their lives since their father or their father figure has gone, uh, has passed away. So Lord God, lift the heaviness, make it not an intense day, replace it and cause them, Lord God, to be able to worship you freely, to be able to go on about their day. Let, it's not that they don't love their fathers or that the fathers who have lost their children don't love their children, but Lord, I just ask that you ease the pain uh, that they feel. Uh, uh, give them, Lord God, a, a peace and let them them know, hallelujah, uh, let them know that you are with them. You are with them. And so uh, that at the end of this day, uh, it's not a day to be uh, regretted or a day to be mourned or a day to be lamented, but it's a day where we celebrate the men that are good fathers. Some men, Lord, don't even have children, but they have been great father figures to others. And we praise you for them. And we pray, Lord God, that you will be a blessing even to the men, the fathers that are here, that are with us. We thank you for every day that we have with our children and every day that the children have with their fathers. So we celebrate good men. We celebrate good role models. We celebrate loving men, especially those men who love you, Lord God, and have committed their life not only to being men on earth, but to being children of God. In Jesus' name, amen. So listen, uh, tomorrow there will be no prayer call tomorrow. Uh, the 90th prayer call is going to happen on Monday. Uh, why? My son, Jeff, 
and his wife, Cherie, and their three children surprised me and came to Columbus uh, for a wonderful Father's Day. What a great Father's Day uh, uh, this has been already. It's Saturday. So tomorrow there won't be a call uh, uh, at, uh, uh, at two o'clock. We'll pick it up on Monday. The Lord bless you. Remember, service tomorrow at 9 a.m. and at 11 a.m. You can catch it right here on Facebook or call in. The Lord bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Bye-bye.